So hello everybody, it is time for the Power BI update. This time is from May 2022 and we're going to go through all the new features and updates. Let's get started. First of all, the new format pane is generally available, which means that you cannot turn it off anymore. Okay, so be aware of that when you update to the May update on the desktop. They have also added the option for us to have all the panes expanded at once. You go to File, Options, and then you will find it there. I'm going to definitely give it a go because I literally change my mouse every six months. So you can imagine the number of clicks. So hopefully this will take care of that, at least. It will give more longevity to my mouse. They have also added back some mission features for the format pane and they have also renamed a few things so they are easier to find when you're searching for them. So they are introducing the canvas zoom, which means that we will be able to zoom in into the canvas, into the reporting pane, to be able to see all the details. You've been able to do that with a mouse pad if you just do like that, you know, the normal zoom on the mouse. Uh, so I've been using that all the time, but for those of you that use a keyboard, obviously this is a better option, okay? so. Nice introduction. The next one is about field parameters. And this is basically a feature that will allow you to dynamically change the dimensions or measures that are shown on a visual. And there are tons of hacks for doing this. You could use bookmarks, you could use DAX. I have done videos about it, but now it is out of the box, which is a lot better. You know, you don't need to be like a super user to be able to do that kind of thing. Now be careful because it makes the report a lot more complicated and it will fit in some cases, but not always. So you don't need to do this everywhere all the time, okay? So I can actually see in front of me finance professionals and Click users, or those that are migrating from Click to Power BI, screaming of happiness, because definitely this is something that it wasn't Click for like many, many years ago. And any time that somebody's asked to migrate. This is a feature that is a must have. So hopefully this will fill the gaps between Click and Power BI, especially if you're doing migrations from one tool to the other. So the next feature is that administrators, Power BI administrators can now enable or disable direct query connections to a Power BI data set. Power BI data set, not Azure Analysis Services, just the data set. The feature is enabled by default, but your admin can actually disable it. If you as an admin disable it, the existing reports will continue to work. But if somebody connects through a Power BI data set through the Power BI desktop, and this is enabled, so they are not able to connect via direct query, they will get a message saying that they have to import. And not only that, they will be able to actually explore the data create a model, but they will not be able to publish it to the service and they will get an mess error message when that happens to warn them that that ability has been disabled due to the direct query connection. So the data point rectangle select is now generally available. Okay, I always forget it's in there, but it is in there and it's generally available. And not only that, you can also use it with the keyboard. You click S and then with the arrows, you can actually create the rectangle and select data points, okay? And error bars have made it to column and line combination charts, nice. So the next set of features I'm going to review is about Power BI service, starting with Power BI subscriptions. So if you are an admin, you will be able now to see what subscriptions have been created and manage them. So you will be able to edit them, to take over, who subscribed to what, things like that for each workspace, which is quite neat. And when it comes to dataset hub improvements, they have added a button now that if you navigate to a dataset hub, before you could actually create the report from scratch, now you can auto create the report and it will create a Power BI report with some basic charts on it. And now there are two things that are going away probably because nobody was using them, okay? So the first one is set a report as featured on Power BI service. And the other one is the deprecation of the Power BI dashboard performance inspector. For the mobile this month, so 
anytime anybody makes a goal update that you subscribe to, it will be available on the mobile activity feed. So Charticulator is now generally available. Well done, Charticulator team. Now, I won't have Charticulator as an out-of-the-box visual in Power BI desktop, and there is an idea for you to vote on down below. So go there and vote, and let's have that awesome visual inside Power BI. If you are a huge fan of Charticulator as I am, there is now a challenge, a contest that you can win, like Power BI talks and other Power BI uh, stuff. So if you want that stuff, if you like to practice with Charticulator, I'm going to post a link down below to the competition so you can enter it. Okay, love to see what you're going to create with Charticulator. And last but not least, if you are having issues with WebView 2, if it is crashing your Power BI report, you can now easily report back to the Power BI team. My crashes in Power BI are always caused by WebView 2, so I am definitely going to use that button for sure. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what was your favorite Power BI feature this month? I don't particularly have any, but I am curious to hear what yours is. So let me know down below and I will see you again on Thursday, probably reviewing the parameters field thingy. So I will see you again on Thursday. Take care.